What is up, YouTube? Third Impact here for another In the Nick of Time JoJo's Bizarre Adventure review for Stardust Crusaders Episode 15 Justice Part 2. There's a lot of different videos I wanted to make this week, and there's a lot of new series I'm watching that I want to talk to you guys about, but these videos will have to be made in the next couple days because I had a guest over from Monday to Thursday. So sorry that this video is a little bit late and uh, Space Danny review is incoming, I promise. So please stay tuned. So this episode begins with Polnareff investigating the ruckus um, he heard last episode, which was of course Enyaba controlling Whole Horse to shoot himself in the face. So Polnareff's down here investigating and Enyaba can't allow him to find Whole Horse's corpse. So she makes a bit of her own ruckus and a mess to distract Polnareff while she uses justice to slowly pull Whole Horse away into some cover with his arm and, and Stan's power. So Polnareff's just kind of making small talk with Enyaba. He's wondering, like, oh, like, do you need help with anything? Oh, you must be lonely here. Do you have any family or anything like that? And you can kind of see where this conversation is going. Enyaba's becoming a little bit enraged over the fact that, of course... Paul and the ref killed Jay Giles, centerfold. And the funny thing with this scene is that Paul and the ref just keeps pushing it. He eventually gets her in a, in a chair and he starts giving her a massage. Well, first he gets even more specific, asking like, oh, well, if you only had a son around to help you, you know, oh, you, I'm sure you'd be a lot less lonely. I'm sure this would be a lot easier for you. And then he starts giving her a massage and she's just losing it, but... He's even going as far as to say, oh, you can just pretend that I'm your son and all this sort of thing. Let, ask me to do whatever you want. And it's just so funny flipping back and forth between him being all happy and her having to keep her cool. And it's switching to these shots of you seeing how Enyaba looks on the inside, just completely enraged. So she's about to lose her cool. There's just sweat flying off of her face. This horrible red aura of just hatred and malice. And... Whole Horse suddenly yells, and it turns out he's alive. He deactivated his stand right before it was able to hit him in the head. Well, it seemed like there was blood, so hit him further in the head? Anyways, Enyaba takes this opportunity to say, screw it, I'm going to kill Polnareff here, with a pair of scissors. Now, there's another part um, a little bit further ahead where... Uh, Polnareff's running away and Enyaba's chasing after him and he's shocked at the fact that such an old woman is able to run as fast as she can. But I think it's much more amazing that Enyaba is able to fence off against Silver Chariot with a pair of scissors. This old woman without any powers or anything related to her stand uses a pair of scissors to fight off the almighty and skillful with the sword Silver Chariot. So that was pretty insane. But um, Enyaba and her army of corpse puppets that she controls with justice begin chasing Polnareff and trap him in the washroom. And again, he always talks about how he has such horrible luck in bathrooms after that one um, Emperor and Hagman part one where there's the pig in the toilet. And this scene is just so long and it's trying so hard to just build up this suspense of like, oh, are they on the other side? Oh, what's going on? And it is pretty intense. But at the same time, it is a pretty ridiculous scene that goes on for quite a while. And what this ends with is Polnareff just very closely getting to peek through the little hole in the door to see what's going on. And he gets surprised and gets a zombie tongue piercing his tongue, which then creates a wound and allows Enyaba to control him. So she's swinging him around like a puppet, getting all the ghouls to laugh at him, and really just trying to humiliate him as best she can. And she comes up with the idea to have him lick the toilet clean. And this is just such a cringe-worthy scene. You don't necessarily see it get to this point, but just when they have the close-ups of Enyaba's face, she's like, oh yeah, lick it all up, lick it all up. And she's like, it's just this old woman with her tongue, just like doing all these crazy like twirls and like sounds, referring to him licking a toilet clean, of course. So just absolutely disgusting. But right before he's about to make contact, Jotaro barges in, and Enyaba has to stop what she's doing, and at this point, Jotaro clearly knows what's up. We saw him kind of looking around, being suspicious last episode, 
And he immediately starts off with like, oh, and you know, was like, oh, why didn't you knock? You, you know, you should have some manners, you know. And Jotaro was like, I did knock. That must mean that you were so busy doing something that, that you didn't have time to hear me and pay attention to that. Now, doesn't it? She's like, and you can see her sweating and kind of see her freaking out. And this goes on and on for a little bit. And at one point, she, she calls him Jotaro, of course, just like she called Joseph Joseph in the last episode. But um, she decides it's time to go in for the kill. Jotaro's got his back turned to her, and she's going in with the scissors. He's like, oh, well, one more question. And he turns around and trips her up by accident. She's on the ground, almost pierces her eye with the scissors that she was holding. It's like, one, you should be a lot more careful with those scissors. You could hurt yourself. And number two, how did you know my name was Jotaro? She starts panicking again for a little bit, but she's like, oh, no, 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 no. You signed your name in the guest book. Like, of course I know your name. He's like, you mean this guest book right here? And he has the guest book, points to his name, and he signed it Q-Taro instead of Jotaro. He was just suspicious and thought he would slide that in there. I guess hoping she would mess up with the names again? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, um... <laughs> This, at this point, Enyaba knows that the cover is completely blown, but she's going for the kill with her stand, and she's, her ghoul army bursts through the door to attack Jotaro, who makes quick work of all these ghouls with Star Platinum, of course, with some really intense ones, takes out this entire horde, sends them flying through windows, all sorts of crazy stuff. But one ghoul ends up getting him, and it's a little baby one that the girl with all the like blisters and stuff on her face was holding in the last episode it pierces a uh, part of his leg with its tongue and now he has a wound and Enyaba is able to control him with justice and the whole horse is there just going on and on about how all powerful her stand is and how they don't stand a chance and it's really funny because Enyaba actually like comments on him saying all these things. She's like, "Oh yes, yeah, keep keep going. I like I like hearing these things. Please tell me how much more powerful my stand is." So that was good, but it, this is just such a ridiculous, ridiculous moment. Even for JoJo, I'd say this is one of the most ridiculous ways that a stand user is defeated. Definitely the most I'd say up until this point, but especially the fact that it is like this sort of arc's final villain, this is Enyaba, this big crazy old woman, well not actually big, but big bad crazy old woman, who has sent all of these killer stand users after them, and she now has complete control over the situation, no one else is around, Jotaro has the wound in his leg, and he can't do anything to Justice, because Justice is just missed, of course, you can't punch missed, but... Jotaro's confident, the music kicks in and he does this little hat thing and it says, I'm going to beat you before you can even take another breath, so don't even worry about it. And it's just like, what are you talking about? This is crazy. <gasps> and she can't breathe. And it's like, well, what's happening? Star Platinum has begun inhaling Justice's face and he's keeping it down. Just even the lines the narrator's given at, at this point. Sucking in his face face and keeping it down and that's exactly what star platinum does he has just really good lungs and inhales just the stand justice and obviously once you inhale the person's stand they can't breathe like that's just common sense right of course so Enyaba passes out and but from the beginning of jotaro sucking in the stand and Enyaba passing out it's just really funny how this huge villain that's been pumped up is literally defeated in like a minute once Jotaro decides to just breathe in her ability. So that's great. She passes out and they take her hostage. And Whole Horse takes off with their with their car. Says he's going to stick with Dio and maybe he'll see them later if they can survive. But that's the end of that. They have Enyaba as a hostage. And it turns out, yes, the entire village was a cemetery that Enyaba was using to her advantage by using them all as puppets. And that about does it for this week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, all done in one take. Of course, I was late giving you guys this video this week, so I've had a lot of time to think about what I was going to say. But again, I'm sorry. I won't happen next week. You're going to be getting the new episode featuring Steely Dan. I believe that's his name, Steely Dan. 
The Lovers Part 1, um, either today or tomorrow. Space Danny should be rolling in soon, shortly, maybe today or tomorrow. And then, the only thing I have to confide in you guys, with a lot of my anime viewing, I really enjoy viewing anime with my friends, with my IRL friends. So sometimes I don't watch an episode right away and make a video, because I'm... I'm holding out that I'm going to be hanging out with my friends the next day, and I can watch with them, and then I can make my vi my video. So yes, there's there's a Tokyo Ghoul video that needs to happen. I haven't seen the third episode yet. There's Zankyo no Terror. First two episodes are out yet. Awesome, awesome show that I definitely want to be talking about. And Psychopaths Extended Edition. Two episodes of that out now that I definitely want to be talking about. So please stay tuned. I promise these videos are going to be rolling out momentarily. Hopefully this weekend I can get a lot of that done. So please stay tuned. Please like, subscribe, and comment. I will see you guys later, and peace out.